Well, you guys got another video on how to debloat Windows 11 for optimal performance. This is a new method of debloating Windows, and I want to go through it and show you in this video. I made a video the other day showing you one method for a new program that was out on the market. This one is another one that has been created, and we're going to be taking a look at it. Now, we all know that Microsoft bloats Windows 11 with pre-installed apps, also Copilot, Recall, and a bunch of other stuff that people just don't want on their computer. I just want a nice, clean-looking operating system that runs nice and smoothly. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how you can do this with this application and run it. And it will take care of all of the settings and the bloating process for you. It'll even remove Microsoft Edge. It's called Winhance, and it's a program that's in production right now, so it's not fully finished, but... We're going to go through and take a look at it. So it's free to use and free to download. You can even install uh, programs from here as well. And I'll show you that all in this video. So to use it, all you need to do is head over to the link in the video description. And of course, you would need to follow the uh, user instructions here. So the user instructions are pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a terminal window. And just copy these two commands that he has here on his website. So let's go ahead and right click on the start button and open the terminal window up and run this as administrator. And we should see a couple of little commands that we need to paste in. And this is to unrestrict the PowerShell here, as you can see. And we need to then copy out this long command so we can download the uh, app. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Push enter. And this will then pull down the app or PowerShell script. You can see, welcome to Winhance. This is a tool that enhances Windows experience by modifying system settings. By continuing, you do agree that you are using this software at your own risk. The author accepts no liability for any issues that may occur. Press OK to continue. So basically, it's doing what a lot of these uh, script creators or program creators do which is basically detach themselves from any liability if you use this and break your Windows operating system or lose any data or any of that stuff. It's pretty normal standard practice for a lot of these people that create these scripts. You won't get any support from these guys either. If you went to their Discord, they're not going to help you because you've run this at your own risk, basically. So let's go ahead and continue anyway. So we've got the welcome to Windhance here. A registry backup has already been created. So that's a good sign that they created a registry backup for you. And also there's a log file saved right in that location right there. So if you need to restore the system or reset the registry, you can do by using that registry backup that they've already created for you. Now, also right up the very top, we've got software and apps. This is the area where we can install apps, for instance, if you need to reinstall Microsoft Store or you need to reinstall any sort of browsers, they're listed here. And again, we can reinstall OneDrive as well. So I'm going to go ahead and install Chrome uh, browser because we are going to be removing Microsoft Edge because this application allows you to remove Microsoft Edge. I just want to show you how you do it. I'm not recommending that you go ahead and remove Microsoft Edge, but I just want to show you it does actually work and it does remove it. So we've gone ahead and we've now installed Google Chrome. You can see up the top left, it's telling us that we are installing Google Chrome. Now, again, once you start to remove Windows apps, you can see they're all listed here. Now, a lot of these apps are just garbage and no one really uses them. But if you do, then by all means, you can take the button out of these to unselect it to make sure that you don't uninstall it because it's going to remove everything that you see on here the ones in green are the ones that are actually installed on the system and you can see there's recall on here phone link there's also notepad microsoft store and all your usual suspects that are installed or pre-installed on your windows 11 install when you install windows so if you want to go ahead and remove all of them, then leave them as is. But if you want to keep some, just remove it like I just showed you there with the terminal. If you want to keep photos, you can just remove it like this and it will keep the photos app installed on there. Everyone is going to have their own preference to what they use. You might use the Xbox app. If that is the case, then remove the radio button from there. And that way it will leave Xbox app on the system. Again, it's entirely up to you what you select here. I'm going to go for the maximum and remove everything apart from terminal and say uh, yes here because this is going to 
say we are going to now remove all of your selection and it's notifying me that I am selecting to remove Microsoft Edge. Make sure you have a, a browser installed on your system. I've already installed Google Chrome, so I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I want to execute this and remove all of these from my computer. Now you can see it's already going to be removing Notepad, but Notepad has become pretty bloated nowadays and there's plenty of other options available out there. It's embedding AI into Notepad as well. So if you don't want any of that stuff on your PC, then just remove all of that stuff as well. You can see by pushing the Windows key, it will open up a prompt box, and this is what's happening in the background. It's now going to ask us, do we want to remove OneDrive here? And you can see up the very top, there's a little line of code here that is showing you what is actually happening in the background. Because what this is really is a PowerShell script, and this is a front end. So the guy's created a front end GUI uh, for a PowerShell script, and it is running in the background to give you a little bit more visual effect when you're looking at it. The same for Chris Titus Text Tool. This is probably using some of Chris Titus Text code, and it's using that in the background, and it's gonna remove a lot of that stuff. And again, I think he's working on the GUI interface as we speak to try and make it a little bit more user friendly. He's asking for tips and tricks on what you want to remove and things he wants to add to the application. So that's basically that. So it is work in progress. And we have done the software and app section. So let's move on to the optimized section. This definitely does need some work I can see here because basically it's just going to give you an option to remove all of the uh, privacy settings, game options and Windows updates and stuff like that. It's not organized at the moment. And I think that's work in progress, what he's probably working on. Now, the, uh, the app that I showed you the other day, which is another front end PowerShell script sort of app, it is well configured and very well organized and it makes things a lot easier to remove stuff. So if you want to see that video, then check my video playlist and you'll see how to use that app. It is a pretty decent app as well. I would say it's probably in front of this at the moment uh, for organization and ease of use, but this is work in progress and I'll keep an eye on it and keep you updated uh, if there's been any major changes to this particular app. What I would like to see here is drop down menus to what is actually being changed. For instance, a drop down menu for the privacy settings and there's a big long list of what's being changed. Same thing for Windows updates, power settings, and also scheduled tasks and things like that, and services, what have been changed. I think that would be a nice added feature on there. It's probably going to be a lot of work, but hey, if you're going to release something like this, you want to give people the option to see what is actually changing on the system. And we can see here now, it's put a little pop-up box, and we can see the optimizations have been done on the system. And again, that has now changed those for us. Next, we've got customize here and you can make dark mode here by applying dark mode to Windows. So we're going to say yes here to apply dark mode. And there's also some other options available below that, which is taskbar, start menu, explorer, notifications, sound, uh, assess uh, accessibility and also search. It's going to be doing some tweaks on there. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be some little pop-up bubbles here to tell you exactly what this is doing a little bit later on when he works on it more. But again, I do think it's a good start. So let's go ahead and apply these as well. And just before we finish this off, I just want to quickly go down to the about section and you can see there's create a Windhance desktop shortcut. And there's also uh, shortcut keys for his website and also YouTube channel and GitHub. And there's a PayPal donations for support if you want to do that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the Winhance here. So I'm going to close this off right now and I'm going to go ahead and restart the PC. Before I do that, let's just quickly show you that the app does have a dark mode and light mode here, depending on whether you like the dark mode on the app as well. So we've closed this off and I'll quickly restart the system. And you can see, already see it's been debloated quite a bit and it looks pretty clean. So I'm going to go ahead and restart. There's going to be a little update window and we're going to boot back to the desktop and we can have a look at what it looks like when it's completely rebooted. So it has tweaked the services and other things like that. I'm not going to go too much into uh, all of that here. I'm just going to show you basically what it looks like. Again, you can sort this bottom part out by just right clicking on the start menu. I would change the start menu to start 11 in my personal opinion i do prefer that over this one they got here which is an absolute monstrosity but again 
that's what you've got here now uh, the get started still there that's really hard to remove and also that is pretty much it we've removed everything here including edge so all in all a pretty clean looking system and it only takes a few uh, minutes to actually go ahead and do all of that which is pretty good and you can see it's just applied a load of settings now i did notice inside the privacy and security area here it's applied some policies here but some of these down here have just been left they haven't set policies for these it's just turned them off and i did notice that a lot of this stuff is still turned on here like these here so if you don't want any of these you're still going to have to go in here and configure these like the notifications area and things like that and again it's hard to please everyone because everyone's going to want to have certain settings on their pc so i guess uh, you know if you put a script in there that's going to just disable and set all these two off with group policy uh, or a policy setting then obviously someone's going to complain and say they use that feature and now that it's disabled so it's hard to please everyone but i can see already that it's gone through here and turned this off and do not disturb has been enabled so all in all a pretty decent little job so if you're one of those people that don't want to put a lot of effort into optimizing your pc you can use something like this which takes literally you know 30 seconds to open up and uh, run and it will then give you a quick reboot and you'll be up and running with a debloated windows 11 and hopefully a much more easier and better user experience with uh, windows 11 now i just want to say that if you are going to be using methods like these to debloat and also uninstall and remove a lot of these and apply settings just make sure you know what you're getting into i don't know how many pcs that i've fixed with heavily tweaked operating systems and of course now things don't work properly and they want you to try and fix it and of course they say they never did anything and then they realize that they run a script on it you know 10 months ago and now they want to tr something's not working properly and they want to try and get it working so always be careful and create restore points back your data up and make sure you understand what is actually happening to the system before you make any changes to your computer anyway with that said i think that's going to be about it my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to my youtube members whether you're tier one tier two or tier three i really do appreciate the support check out our new discord channel it's in the video description you can click on that and join and i'll catch you in the next one bye for now